That was so sick. Did you see how smooth that was? Yeah. So Jenks, this is Periot Mesa. This is the convent. We're gonna go from just about here up to midway on the talus field. It's just about a mile long and it's gonna be about 30 seconds of zip lining. So how much Dyneema did you bring? So I showed up with a kilometer of Dyneema, which is this is what you need in order to zip line. But they got more ambitious. And so we needed to extend it. One of our options was to use a bunch of webbing. But the problem is this doesn't have a sheath and we are going to have to drag it across the mountain. But what's great is Taylor has a paramotor and he's going to fly the Dyneema up to the top of Periot Mesa. We needed to know exactly how long this was and we wanted to make sure it was flaked perfectly in the bag. So as he's flying up, the stuff's going to be coming out really quick and we want to make sure that he's going to have enough of it. What do you think about people who zip line base jump? They're boring. <laughs> <laughs> Three, three, eight, seven feet. Now, one of the benefits to having Taylor show up on the team is that he has a bunch, like 800 meters of some static rope. And that's gonna really help because we can actually drag that across the ground less of an issue. However, tensioning is a little bit more of an issue because the cinders can only do so much. And in a knot, it's actually weaker than the Dyneema by like 30%. Wasn't stoked on that, but it did help us accomplish what we needed. So basically with this, we're definitely gonna need to call the FAA to file a notum. We should just block out the whole area. Now, if you're gonna put anything in the middle of the sky, you have to call a notum or notice to airmen and inform anybody who might be flying through that space that there is a zip line people are base jumping off of. I mean, that could work. Just a bunch of it. <laughs> like streamers. Now it's nice to make what you're putting through the sky visible for pilots but you can't exactly put a windsock on this and have a pulley run over it. So we could connect something from the quick link that connects this to the rope and then periodically put it on the rope all the way to the tension side, making half of it visible. Custom made, baby. It doesn't get better than that. A little stick, some webbing, and you just tape it together. You can just, oh, you've already got it torn. This is Gorilla tape, it's different. It's different. <laughs> <laughs> this shit's rated. Yeah. And then so now, it's just like this. Ah! When you're on the zip line, it's gonna feel much easier because you have airspeed. So you're not gonna have all that weight on your hands. I remember on the last zip line, I had the same thing. We hung it up in the yard and I was like, holy shit, I'm not gonna be able to do this. I got all scared. And then when we went and did it, I was like, oh, it's so easy. Yeah, just remember legs wide so that you don't spin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I'm gonna be attached to a guy named Sketchy. I don't know if he'll- You guys might spin a few times. The old desert alpine start. What is it, 10.30? <laughs> <laughs> Is this the uh, grinders meetup? Oh. <laughs> oh God! Yeah. Oh, what, what do you got there? Sexy inlay. Nice and crispy. Chris Tom Jones is gonna have a heart attack when he sees what we're using his ropes for. Oh, the desert monkeys. Good old Rocky. Yeah. Heard to see the boys over at Rocky Talkie. Uh -huh. um, how do you set the private channels on this thing? CT, the down volume. So I've got um, three spools. Brand new, unused on the spool. Got one spool that's been used as my haul line yeah. for the last five book swing rigs. Cameraman, get your shit together, bro. We that basically are. need as much as we can get we because need, at like this down to the base. So we need basically 2K of material to get a 1.7, 1 1.8. 1 I'll, I'll open the back of it. He does have the trike and he is gonna take me up on the trike and drop me on Paris. <laughs> You're spoiled. Oh. So Taylor had a few new spools and a few used spools and we're gonna to need to lay some rope on the ground. And so we're gonna to wanna to pull out a bunch of rope once we get it all laid out. And so we want the new rope to be the part that's still in the sky when we're done setting this up. So we had to coordinate uh, which rope is gonna go where, what's gonna go in what bag, what bag's gonna go up first, and then flake everything out, out at the parking lot. And then we look up and see what we see every time we do a large project, a helicopter flying right through our space that we called a notum for. 
and both private companies that usually fly in that area. That is exactly where our line's gonna be. Holy shit. Every time. Now that we have 2,000 meters of Dyneema and rope, we hike a mile up the wash to get in between the convent and Periat Mesa. I'm gonna come by and grab a loop with my foot on my paramotor and fly it up to the top of there. How far away are we from here? 980 meters, so. which in US is about, um, yeah, 55 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> Top or the bottom? That's the top. This is the bottom. Yeah. I'll just stretch it out this way. Yeah. And he's gonna come through like this and just snag it. Let because me check. Let me check. Did you dress it really nice? Is it perfect? Bro, is that yeah, strong so, enough? So well you didn't dressed. back it up. So right now we are at a 23 degree angle and we want 10 degree angle for the speed to be good but not too scary. So we're gonna go probably above the shelf up here to some of these darker house sized boulders. And we've got two more bags of ropes to get up there. And then one of the bags of rope is probably going to get pulled through the system before we're tight. Yeah, wipe the sweat off that. We're almost to the 10 degree mark. I think we're at like 12 degrees from the top of where they are. So an all natural anchor is where you wrap plastic around rocks, but you leave nothing behind. And I think that's why they call it all natural. <laughs> we wrap this car sized boulder. And because we're not sure if that one's UIAA rated, we wrapped it around this ANSI rated rock completely around this thing into like basically a tensionless hitch with the excess rope we had. Let's go into our rigging plate. This is just temporarily our three to one. I eventually get changed out to a gree gree, which eventually gets changed out to a knot as our final termination. Line scale three, we can keep tabs on how we're doing. Oh, he's got it. He's got it. He's got it. He's, got it. he's going up. Go up. Something just fell. He lost the line. Damn. Uh, yeah, he dropped it. It got snagged on something. We're gonna try for a second pass. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, he dropped it. He's doing those big snakes and it keeps getting caught on bushes and he's dropping it. I mean, third time's a charm. They're keeping a pretty tight tension. It's going straight up to him. Dude, if this works, I'm gonna be shocked. I ran out of line once I got to the top of Periot, about probably five or six minutes after uh, I picked it up. I had to climb, 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 and then head over the top of Periot Mesa. Normally when you fly, you fly in a straight seated position like this, but when you have like 80 pounds of am steel pulling you back, it was more like this, and then I was correcting my flight path like this. Uh, and then I could feel it bottom out. And um, basically what happens is if your body stops flying, your wing is gonna still fly and shoot you straight into the ground. So as I got over the top of Peria, I was about 40 feet off the ground. Uh, I felt it catch. I felt dive bombing, but I knew I couldn't release it yet because I had just barely gotten over the top of Andy. I needed to give some slack so that when I dropped it, um, it didn't fall back over the top of the cliff. It needed to hit the ground first. I thought that they weren't gonna catch it. I looked back after I dropped it and I saw uh, Jimmy and Andy like, yeah, <laughs> yes, they caught it. I don't have to do that again. Ah! Ah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> no way! We got it. Wow, that was magical. <laughs> I can't believe that worked. Uh, definitely a couple of bunches went up, like loop throughs. I want to uh, get eyes on it if we can. So this is the knot that went out. There's the bottom over there. Top going up there. I'm about to pull this bad boy out. Oh, how a project can go from a high to a low. It is now my time to shine now that the line is across and it's time to tension. And so Taylor ended up taking Sylvan up to the top of Periot Mesa with his trike. Sylvan base jumped off of him and then repacked his shoe. So now Andy, Jimmy, and Sylvan are all waiting for me to make this thing tight enough in order for them to go start the zip line. The problem is I was left to tension by myself because I lost my team to get the rope unstuck out of the boulder field because where we hiked up and where they built the anchor was like 300 meters off. And so we ended up having to get all this rope out of the boulders 
and I ended up tensioning what would have been easy with just a micro traction and three of us pulling if it was straight. And we would have got it off the ground in probably 20, 30 minutes. There's a lot of rope in the system. But I ended up having to do a three to one and a five to one just to get it off the ground. And I had to do it by myself. It took so much longer. A 400 meters so far, I pulled out of this. So it's just, we're running out of daylight. This is my rat's nest. I just been having to pull, couldn't manage it. I think I gotta get this off the rocks. We're almost, we're almost straight. So after three hours in the blazing sun, I barely got it off the ground and Matt was finally able to come back up, but he was bonking at that time. Wow, it feels so much more than that right now. That's pretty good though. Cause we got a knot here and then just that as a backup. And we're completely off that rock, which means we're off all the rocks all the way up to there. I think it's like 8.30 at night and we can't finish. So we're gonna, we're gonna go down before it gets too dark. We have one headlamp. Even though there was only one kilonewton of tension on the line, in order to gain more, it ended up taking four or five kilonewtons of energy because of all the friction around the rocks. After 550 meters of pulling solo, uh, it was too late in the day. And so they ended up having to jump off uh, normal base jump and go to the car and basically try again for the next day. So it's 9.30 at night and we're just getting back to the car. Everyone has left, but they did leave us a car with keys in it, supposedly. Man, it's pretty hard to be super like on it tomorrow when you're this gassed. It just has a lot of ups and downs when you're doing a project this big. See you guys tomorrow what he said and it was the best exit we were desperate look who we recruited <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah got some more help since uh taylor doesn't have to fly today uh he can help tension too we're going to do a five to one with three people that's a five to three it's a 15 to one uh it's a five to three i know math and stop <laughs> 2.1 baby so we have our five to one uh i don't want to rest it on teeth so we have it in the gray gray it'll slip before it desheaths if i want it to be at least above three otherwise it's going to be too steep coming off all i know is you guys are going to stay with me on this hike because i'm going to need some help with the safe frame every now and then. it's going to be kind of a weird setup for the chimney at the top but you know safety is our number one priority here i think sure moab this thing's been a bitch, but we're almost at the top. Since they couldn't build an anchor right on the edge with a platform ledge below it like we wanted, they had to bring up something that would hold up the line. And highlighting this is called an A-frame, so you can have your anchor further back, but still be able to stabilize the line where it meets the cliff edge. We're on 3.2 kilonewtons. You're good to go on our side. Three, two, one. Cheers! Five K in. Oh my God! Is that his little body moving? Just yeah. So slow. It looks like. Wow. I think it's fast. There he goes. I can't even see him, bro. That was so sick. That was so sick. You see how smooth that was? Yeah. Oh man, I love this shit so much. Love you, boys. Love you, brother. Later. I can't get over how slow it is. I bet he's hauling ass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sit tight, wait for the three, two on. Legs up on landing because you are gonna be landing with the GoPro on your foot. All right, we got Andy going down in about 10 seconds. Can you step forward a bit? Okay. Step forward, you know, keep some stepping forward. And then here we go, three, Oh, he's actually going quick. He's hauling. Oh, yeah, bud! Yeah! Woo! This stuff settled to two and a half K in. So, I have an A frame holding up.
that Dyneema right near the edge so it's not going to just smack down on the edge and we can actually stand there a little bit more comfortable tandeming off. So now I feel super comfortable enough to go up there. The problem is it's all the way up there. We're taking a midday break. We're going into town grabbing some Mexican food and then uh, five o'clock Andy and I hike up and I hopefully kind of keep the courage. I guess it's my turn. So what was it like? Because I'm curious how hard it's gonna to be to hang on. It, it was so easy. The scariest part is just kind of getting up and set for it. I was worried about as we went off that there'd be a little bit of a drop and maybe it'd be hard to hang on or... That's been my biggest concern. Yeah, and so as we went off, there was hardly any drop and it was so easy to hang on. Literally, we could have hung on all the way across. It looked like you're going way faster than everyone else. We were cooking, man. <laughs> we were going so fast. So you should be good to go. We got the hard stuff out of the way. and Yeah, seriously. I wanted you guys to work out the kinks. Thanks yeah, for doing that. Yeah, definitely. I was going over 60 miles an hour guaranteed. The thing was, is that I wanted to go slider up. But then I thought, hey, if we buck off the beginning, slider up and I pitch, we're out of control, maybe we die, actually a high percentage chance that we die. So I was like, well, what I should do is static line. But then I was thinking to myself, I should have just static line slider up. I shouldn't have taken slider up out of the equation. I should have just jumped off and said, if we buck it off in the slider up equation at 500 feet with a tandem rig, we're good to go. But I was like, oh, I should probably do slider down just in case this and that all fair it goes. And I have full chances to open slider down after the way that we brought that a-frame up and the way that it's you literally just step off it's so easy it's the most brilliant easy totally awesome thing ever and i should have just kept it slider up but then we got a little bit more speed because there's two people and i told aaron i'm gonna go three two one and i'm gonna pitch on one and you're gonna let go on let's go and i didn't even get let's go out of my mouth it was three two one pitch open to the face <laughs> and I was very much so close to being knocked out. Teeth were bleeding, nose was bleeding. I got shredded. So now we're gonna put a canopy on for Jenks because I care about Jenks way, way more than I care about Aaron. I'm just joking, Aaron, I love you. I saw you flying up your paraglider sideways. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, your hip flexors are gonna be f***ed up. Yo, dude, what's up? Um, right now I'm packing the tandem rig slider up to go back out to hopefully start hiking at about 5, 15, 5, 30, to then do another zip line tandem. Oh, fucking sakes! Wee oh, that feels so good. How are you, Jenks? Better than ever. If you don't use that clip, I swear to God. When you get to the zip line and see how you can't even see the anchor and the explosion, your nuts are gonna suck so far off your back to throw. I can't tell your toss is too goddamn fast. That's gonna be a fast ride at 1.92. I mean, it, if it works, it works. It's pretty good. All right, so this is stabilizing everything. Wow, this is like a spider web. I do like it being that high above our heads. That's a really nice. Understanding gear just makes this part a little bit more fun, even though it's still scary. You know, this skull is not making me feel any better. Apparently, every single screw from my GoPro came out off my camera on the way up. Pretty sure that's gonna hold. And just to make it safe, we're gonna pink duct tape around it. Pretty sure that I got it outside the lenses. But if you guys see that in our video, complain about it, okay? Three, two, one, let go! And, and then if we land safely, you know, thank God, because this is not this supposed is... to work. Make sure oh, all yeah, the furniture's yeah, yeah. in the right room here. Wait, wait, my, my balls? Oh, yeah, hold up the ball. Oh, oh boy. There we go, so. Oh, you weren't kidding. There's your Rocky. We're just gonna tuck this through here. This literally wouldn't be happening right now without Rocky talking. You can buy it on extremegear.org. Actually, you can't, but if you use this link, you get 10% off. <laughs> Stand up on landing. I have a camera on my foot. Okay, fine. And stand it on up. 
Yes! Are you yes! kidding me? Yes! <laughs> I never even felt the pain in my hands hanging on, but they hurt now. We flew across the wash. We went to the very edges of time and space and reality. It was absolutely, we stood up a landing finally. Yeah, we, I don't think we've ever done that. <laughs> Bro, it was like a pillow. I'm talking, this is going to happen way more. Slider up, no broken nose, no blood. No. You have a broken nose. It's broken just not nose. for me. Yeah. So you remember the rocks we were rubbing all this on? Well, there was abrasion. So when Taylor flew this thing over the cliff edge, the edge of this stuff was rubbing the cliff. So about 30 feet out, I could see a lot of fuzzy dyneema right before we went off. So I've isolated the worst of it in between these two ice places. So let's see if we can get more than 17 out of this. Damn, that's pretty good. Now the five millimeter Dyneema we slid on is between 17 and 18 kilonewtons, which is super good enough. The reason that broke so high is because I was trying to extend everything I had and I had a section of six mil. And I don't know how common it is to splice two different diameters together, but I did test six mil spliced into five mil. It was super strong enough. Of course, you're not gonna get stronger than the weakest section in your system, but you can see that it was kind of nice to have the uh, thicker stuff get abraded. Some of this five mil did get pretty roughed up on the rocks. So let's pull on one of these to see if we still get 17 or 18 out of this. So that's the fuzziest piece I could isolate for this test. Yeah, super strong enough. Probably the craziest part is the burn marks on this. Did you ever wonder like, are those pulleys heating up? Yes, yes they are. This is where the quick link to the rope was, and so the pulleys would jam up and stop right there while they were burning hot. And I'm gonna find out if this got weakened at all. It broke at the taper? This had no effect on it. And that's the strongest result I've ever got on five mil. Anyways, the day after my tandem, a bunch of people got to zip line, and Andy finally got to do a solo jump. <laughs> that's all you've got, Andy? A super clean double and a high pull. <laughs> you changed, man. <laughs> man, that's so fun, though. Holy shit. Oh, yeah. I had time for three. You did. <laughs> <laughs>